What's your lunch? Oh, I'm not hungry. I'm always the same when I've met someone. That boring old Brian. You could do better than him. I have got a good feeling about him. The way we met was so natural. Do you remember when Carrie Bradshaw dropped her handbag and Big helped to pick it all up? That'd never be Brian. He's got a clicky it. Oh, well, I know his wee clicky very nicely, thank you. I've always admired teachers. Thirty-odd kids in the palm of your hand. I mean, orders in approximately. Though the law of averages says you're bound to get a few weirdos. Julia, don't you think he's a bit old for you? Oh, I like the man to be older. And do you like the man to be married? Separated? Margaret's left him. Oh, yeah, I wonder why. Because the spark's gone. News flash, people change. I don't want to have to tell you this, but there were rumours that he'd slept with a pupil. <gasps> no! Yeah! Well, no wonder him and John get on so well. Once again, we're not property of the week. Can't please all the people all the time. Two percent they take for setting up two measly viewings. It's a wrong time to sell. First time buyers will love this place. People have got their old jobs secured, so Christmas is round the corner. I reckon we should take it off till spring. Oh, yeah, you'd love that. Wades aren't marketing it properly, or the shop. The books speak for themselves. My dad's spinning his grave, he knew how much we took last week. Uh, I think you'd better work on your sales patter. Oh, what? A thriving gold mine? Five-star service from three generations, the lifeblood of the community. We've talked about this, Ashley. Well, what's the point? Whoever buys a butcher anyway will turn it into a nail bar or something daft. I don't care what they turn it into, we just take the money and run. I'm going to call into Wade's on my way to pick the boys up, give them some constructive criticism. I've given up two free periods to come here. It's much appreciated. Hot chocolate, fiendish Sudoku, comfiest chair in the staff room, all gone for Burton. Well, I'm sure we've got a tin of hot chocolate in the back. Telephone's a wonderful invention, John. I've learned to be very careful about what I say on the phone. Visit me the other. Well, um, Julie, actually. What, my Julie? The woman you know for all the 24 hours, yes. Luminous smile, hourglass figure. I've only hit the jackpot. And what about your Margaret? Oh, dead in the water. I've been in the box room since Whit Sunday. Look, Brian. Good childbearing bearing nips and all my Julie. <laughs> Not that I've got the energy to be chasing after nippers. And your old teaching push off kids for life. It's a big ask. What? It's a big ask. But I need you to cancel your date with Julie. It's too risky. For me and for Fizz. She works with Julie. Julie knows me as John State. And you slipped up last night. Nearly called me you know what. <laughs> Hold up. Firstly, Shame on you, sir. Ask is a verb, not a noun. Thought better of you. Secondly, dream on. I've ironed my shirt, I've polished my shoes, I'm up to trot. You don't understand. Fizz and I lead very compartmentalised lives. It's the only way we can feel safe. Is it really that bad? We know we can't relax into friendships, share confidences, get sloshed. It's worry work, John Boy. It's the price I have to pay. I was going to take her to Far Fusion, splash the cash. She fancies me wrong. I'm not exactly beating him off with a stick. Hey, but, but plenty of girls will go for you. Yeah. Pavement crackers. What happens if you call me Colin again? I won't. What happens if you get drunk? I can't count when I'm drunk. Margaret reckons I'm type 2 diabetes. Oh, come on, I'm begging you here. Please, just tell me that you cancelled Julie. Oh, it seems such a waste. We're talking about the safety of my wife and unborn child. OK. Only for you, John boy. Can't have been much fun witnessing that murder. Oh, oh. sorry. sorry. <sighs> Where's Jack? Both Jacks were asleep. Mm. Look, uh, don't tell him about last night, eh? There's no shame he's being upset, you know. Yeah, I know, but he's got enough on his plate without worrying about me. Mm. Oh, sorry, I'll, uh, I'll not next time. <laughs> but, uh, you've gone back to bed. No, I'll run out of folks. Well, I could have got them for say. you. I am quite capable of walking round to the cabin. Well, for the time being, anyway. Have you had any lunch? Cup of tea and a fag. Jack. I'll go and get you some fish and chips if you want. No, darling. Saving myself till later. Right, you brew up. You, take weight off. Get down here. Come on. Look, kids. Don't wrap me in cotton wool. I just want to do what I like when I like. With whatever time I've got left. I'm a happy as Larry here with you three. And a life full of memories. Mission unaccomplished. But I told her he was on day release from death row. She'd still be going on a date with him. Well, when she switches her phone on, she will find that Brian has blown her out. <gasps> oh, the relief. Just please make sure he stays away. <clears throat> My blood pressure can't cope. What have you got in these bags, Lisa? <laughs> See you in a couple of months. Oh, you'll get your reward in heaven, mate. <laughs> <laughs>
I'd rather have it now, cash preferable. Listen, I'm glad I caught you in dib 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 mode. I need a favour. Bad luck, and skin. Time, I need your time and your beautiful salon soft hands. Well, I'm just a bit busy at the minute. I've got a flat pack thing your drawers. Cheap, cheerful, stupid name. Full of blub 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 housing. Anyway, I've got a mental block with the instructions. Well, can't Tina help you? No, because she's out tonight. Come on, there's a couple of cans in it for you. Some cheese on toast, gourmet, styly. Come on, I'm in flat pack hell here. All right, all right, but only half an hour. You are the top of most. There you go, my love. <laughs> hey, what's that face for? How beautiful is that? Oh, give over. Well, oh, come on, I've had hundreds of, had hundreds of these. I've worn one or two. I'm here, it's courtesy to Yeah, I remember. I wouldn't make them for my Cyril. I said, I'm sick of the sight of them. Well, if you open me up, you find half man, half hot pot. Not to mention half cut. No, no, you mean the first point. I would take this to my desert island, Betty's hot pot. I bet he's worried it's going cold. And I've enjoyed every morsel, thank you, love. Thank you. You silly beggar. Oh, and um, Julie, it's me. Look, I know you might be feeling a bit fed up, but me and John are in the Rovers, if you fancy. So just give me a ring or bob me a text. Let me know you're OK, yeah? Mm, voicemail. I gathered. What? Well, how do you know she's fed up? Because Brian's blown her out. Yeah, and we're not supposed to know that. Brian said he'd keep me out of it. Oh, well, I'm sorry. I'm not quite master of the art of telling whoppers. You've had a lot more practice. What can I get you? Um, um, just orange juice. Emily, what are you having? I'm in the chair. Nothing just yet, thank you. I'm, I'm looking for Rita. I've had the most wonderful news. Oh, have you won the lottery? In a manner of speaking, an unknown benefactor has donated £2,000 to our church roof fund. Oh, great! And that was exactly our shortfall. We have a guardian angel in our midst. It's only money, obviously not short. Now we can get the repairs done before winter sets in and does even more damage. <laughs> and the unknown benefactor, eh? Can you just move your head a bit? Your halo's blinding me. If there is a god, she's got one hell of a property portfolio, aren't they? It's like, I just wanted to get in these good books before I went. Uh, hey, 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 come on, come on. Back a smile for a second, man. Just uh, can't imagine life without you. Tell the lad about me, will you? Every day. Oh no, come on, you, you bore him stiff. No, I just <laughs> want to be mentioned in dispatches every now and again. That'll do. <sighs> People defy the odds all the time. <laughs> you could live for another two years for all the doctors know. Hey, what about that woman in the Daily Mirror? Complete remission. Doctors can't explain it. I baffled our Vera for half a century. No? no reason why I can't do it to fellas in white coats. Yeah. Exactly. You're a good girl. A five makes ten. Cheers, Betty. Okay. Oh, could be Julie. Oh, no, Maria. Is it factory Julie after? Oh, yeah, has she been in? Well, she's out on a date. She's not been gone long. Oh, she was done up lovely. But she always does make the effort, doesn't she? Mm. Yes, love. Far Fusion said he was going to splash the cash. Come on. What? What are we going to do? I don't know. Think on our feet. Contain it. It's all doable. Do you reckon that this is a side panel? No, no that's the bottom of the drawer, that. I'm telling you. Oh, we could be all night. I'll get the cheese on toast going. No, you're all right. I I'm going to get off. Mm -hmm. What? Joel's toolkit. Tina's got Dad's toolkit. He's bound to have one. Right. So we're looking here. Right, there's got to be one in here somewhere. Okay. Oh! Don't look. Don't look. It was meant to be a surprise. What's he doing here? I just came to lend a hand, which was nice. I said get out! Hey! Whatever. Uh, later, dude. What was all that about? This place has been on my wish list for months. I've got to the top of the class, Mr. Packham. Oh, oh Mr. Packham, yes. Please wait, please, sir. 
a bit of fusion cuisine myself. So, what else is on this wish list? All sorts. It's more about the experience than actual things. Like what? Come on, don't be bashful. Hold a piglet. Oh. I've always wanted to hold a piglet in my arms. Couldn't you go to a city farm or something? Mm. Right to Jamie Oliver's I know. I've been very lax about making that one happen. What else? Oh, um, time travel. So I could go on a date with a young Oliver Reed. Tea time-ish, preferably, so we could string a sentence together. So you like your men good looking, then? No, no, no point. Oh, I mean, uh, nice looking. I guess I wouldn't be here now. Good save. Oh, you've got a lovely face, Brian. Kind and wise. And minimal thread veins. Tell me one more. To see the flat iron building in New York. So majestic. Oh, I'd love to bite into the Big Apple. <laughs> But for now, I'll make do with the poster. Brian, you're staring. I'm just drinking you in. Oh, mm. I'm gonna, oh uh -huh. I'm gonna come and have this one. This way, please, sir. Thank you. Do you fancy sharing some prawn balls? Mm. Just a few more minutes, Squire. I don't think. I'm sorry. Fair. Couldn't work out why you went off on one. That's your dad's stuff. His hands are the last hands to touch it. Talk clown. It was my idea to raise your dad's toolkit. David was just being a mate. I just wanted to put the chest of drawers up. Surprise you. I know, I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's all right. I can't believe I went rummaging through your dad's stuff. I overreacted, OK? Just ignore me. Why are you so hard on David? T. I heard you. I'm sure he'll survive. You've been on such a downer on him lately. I've never seen you so cold. Do you want to finish with me? What? I, I, I feel like I'm making you un, unhappy. No. Or maybe you don't like living with me. Maybe it's making you regret things or... Listen. If you still have feelings for David, I, I, I'd just rather know. Tina, I, I just need to know what's going on up there. The, the only thing we owe each other is the truth. So, is it David? I knew, I knew something had happened. Right. OK, well, you know, if it was just physical, then, then maybe we can get past it, but... But if you're still in love with him... <laughs> if I'm a bit self-conscious, Brian, it's because I wasn't expecting the whole double dating thing. Me neither. We had the munchies. Thought it might be good fun. Well, that's a bit of a U-turn. Fizz spent most of today trying to put me off you. Did she buy Jingo? It's a bit rich, isn't it? John. I'm just a bit protective of her. The stuff she came out with does not bear repeating. Try me. Oh, I was winding her up. Excuse me. Come up to the, um... Good idea. Hey, I tell you what, um, when you get back, Fizz and I will have gone. We'll leave you a bottle of wine. Our treat. Yeah, yeah, I won't want to cramp your style. Bye, then. Have a bottle? You've only been away from the classroom two minutes. Uh, uh, we always used to say that furniture sweatshop was like school, eh, hey, Brian? <laughs> we did, John. We did. Oh, yeah. It's all doable. Oh. Might be wifey. Hello? Uh, uh, no, this is a waiter, madam. I think the gentleman you're after has just gone to the restroom. Well, it was ringing and I thought it might be urgent, so. No, no, he's not alone. No. Blonde. Far fusion. Just behind Kendall's, yes. Uh, will you be joining them for dessert? Hello? Come on, let's get out of here. I do not love David. I hate every hair in his evil head. Yeah, well, sometimes it's a fine line. I knew it was about him. You know nothing. Yeah, well, well, tell me. One word at a time. Come on. 
I saw Gail at my dad's grave and she took me home for tea. Last week, yeah? Sitting in the kitchen made me feel close to Dad and I remember thinking that I'd be pleased that we were still friends. Sat around the same table, having a laugh. There was a golden time bef before his money worries and his depression. David walked me home, invited himself in for a brew. He got all nostalgic and then he got a bit heavy. Said that me and him were meant for each other. I told him straight, I'm with you now. Me and him were a lifetime ago. I told him straight, Graham. OK. The next thing, he tried to kiss me. What? I pushed him away and, and he pushed me back and he grabbed my wrists. He said I'd been coming on to him all night, which I hadn't. I couldn't move. I was struggling like mad. And I, I know it sounds bad, but I didn't give him one bit of encouragement. He had me pinned down so I couldn't move. His face was right here. His breath smelled of tea and tic tacs. What did he do to you? He frightened the life out of me. Did he? No, no. But when I was pinned down for one nanosecond, I thought he was going to. But he didn't. Pud pud? I don't believe it. What? I call it pud pud. You're not a Tory, are you? Labour till I die. I knew it. I know you're Pud Pud and all. Careful, there's a couple of red herrings in there. Pa. Come on then, name my Pud Pud. Creme brulee. Oh, <laughs> Miss Tudy, I'm afraid <laughs> Cupid's hit a main artery. <laughs> Margaret. Margaret? As in Margaret? Oh, she knows I exist then. Uh, Julie is a mate of uh, John's, an old colleague. There was a whole bunch of us, one big platonic bunch of workmates and colleagues. And... You're not separated at all. His brain's separated from his unmentionable. Before you go off at the deep end, nothing's happened. Tell her, Julie. We've had a nice bite to eat and a gab. But... I'm sorry, Margaret. I'm not in the habit of dating married men. Say you're welcome to him, but you seem quite nice. Oh, he's all yours. You know what they say in those consumer programmes? If something looks too good to be true, it probably is. Too good to be true, that. Julie, love, book yourself an eye test and a course of self-esteem lessons. Reckons he needs the brownie points in heaven. He's so matter-of-fact. And we're not to tell Emily it was him, by the way. He's getting quite stroppy in his old age. It doesn't look like he's dying. But he is, Ty. We should take a cue from him, head on. Yeah. There's things we can do for him, you know, take the strain off. Yeah, yeah, everything. So, um, we can get in touch with the Macmillan nurses, get advice, find a hospice in case he needs it. We're not going to dump him in an hospice, no way. No, no, I'm not saying that. Well, we won't need a hospice, we can look after him here. Yeah, of course we will. I'm just saying if he needs specialist care or something, I don't know. No, I'm just saying it won't do any harm to be prepared. Well, we can be as prepared as we like, but he dies here, right? Yeah, I know. Jack dies here. Dies at home. Okay. Hey, it's not her fault you're living a lie. She can do a lot better than Brian. Oh, great. Do not take one up the duff. Do you want me to give you head massage? I want you to stop giving me migraines in the first place, John. I'm sorry. You don't need all this stress. Can't be good for the baby, either. Mm -hmm. Disaster averted, Fizzbomb. Only just. I've got the munchies. Fancy a bowl of cereal? No, I'll get it. You stay put. Julie. Down to a penny. Should I say you're in bed? No, no, let her in. She has no luck, that girl. <clears throat> Margaret's kicked me out. For real this time. Why? What happened? Customer service has done me in. How do you mean? Oh, some slimy waiter answered me phone while I was in the loo. Sang like a flaming canary. With Julie? With Julie. But you can't just give up on your marriage, Brian. You've got to fight for it, haven't you, John? Yeah, whatever it takes. Margaret will be feeling humiliated. She, she, she just needs you to wriggle on the hook for a while. <sighs> With my sciatica. <laughs> Me and Margaret, finito benito. No, be all right on here. <sighs> you got a couple of pillows I could cry into. I'll kill him. I called his bluff. I wanted to give him a reality check. He ran off. 
Can't get away quick enough. He needs to pay. You just want to beat him up. I want to stab his vital organs. I want to pin him down with a nail yeah, gun. You keep fantasising. Don't mind me. He frightened you. Nobody gets to frighten you. This isn't about your ego, Graham. If you go after David, you'll end up fucking side. I can't bear the fact that he frightened you, that he even went for your mind, that he was going to... in his eyes for a split second, like he's in yours now to knock seven bells out of him. Right now, you're frightening me. I'm sorry. I don't mean to. I am asking you for my sake. Just leave it. Why? Because it will escalate. Because I don't want you getting hurt. I want to put this behind me. <laughs> You're letting him get away with it. No. We'll, we'll freeze him out of our lives. We, we'd have to talk to him. We won't look at him. He doesn't exist. I need you to promise me that you're not going to do anything or say anything. Is there not a little part of you that wants me to go over there and mash him to a pulp? Yeah, of course. But you're going to waste my little roses and you'll be banged up in a cell. Promise me that you're not going to do anything. Oi! Promise me. OK. OK. Promise. Come here. Well, if you want an insider's look at what's coming up for David and Graham, go to itv.com slash Corrie. Right now for an exclusive interview with Jack P. Shepard, the actor who plays David Platt.